and this probably say, ah, this is probably not going to be something I'd be able to do. Yeah, this is like this is way too much, right? Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, when we look at this problem, there's two different formulas we have, right? Right. There's two different formulas we talked about. We talked about one where you have a um, horizontal list. So you have x, uh, x minus h squared minus y plus y minus k squared divided by a squared divided by b squared equals 1. That makes an ellipse that's going to look something like that, right? Then we've also talked about this formula, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared divided by b squared divided by a squared equals 1. And this one makes an ellipse that looks like that, right? There's only two different ellipses we've had. There's only two different formulas. And the only difference between the two formulas was that the A, which is your length of your major axis of symmetry, is under your x-coordinate. That tells you it's going to be a horizontal ellipse, right? If over here, your A is under the y, that's going to tell you you're now going to be dealing with a vertical, right? Yes? Yes. So there's only two different ways. Now, here's our problem. Does this look anything like one of those two equations. Okay. No, not at all, right? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find a way to rewrite this formula so it looks like one of those. Because once it looks like one of those, our question is asking us to find the center of the vertices, the foci, and to sketch the graph. So we need to make it, this is pretty easy. Once we know what h and k is, we've got the center. Once we know a, we know what the vertices are. Once we know a and b, we can find c to find the foci, right? Okay, so we got to rewrite this. Um, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group the x's and the y's and get my number, my constant to the other side. So let's subtract the constant to the other side and let's rewrite these so that my variables are together. So, we put, um, now we have our variables, our variables are together, and we have my constant to the other side. You guys can see now, I'm kind of getting a little bit here, right? Because now I have the x's plus the y's equal one. But our problem is, our, our equation has a binomial square, right? This says x minus h squared. That's a binomial square. So does anybody remember the process that we had to use to get binomial square? Completing the square, right? So to do completing the square, we had to create a perfect square trinomial. So does anybody remember the formula to create a perfect square trinomial? B divided by, by 2 squared. Exactly. So what I want to do is for this, for the x's, I want to create a perfect square trinomial. And for the y's, I want to create a perfect square trinomial. Because once I have it as a perfect square trinomial, I can then factor it into a binomial square, meaning it's going to look exactly like this. So first thing, if I complete the square for the x's, the first thing I have to do is factor out the 16, right? Because we can't have a 16 here. Well, you can't have a coefficient of your x squared. Wait, wait, wait. The problem says it's minus 32, not 32. Oh, is it? Yeah. That probably makes sense. You were at 22. Make sure I have the rest of the numbers correct, please. Okay, so let's factor out a 16. Factor out a 16, I'm left with x squared minus 2x. And then here, to before I can complete the square for my y's, I can factor out a 25, right? So 25, y squared plus 2y equals a negative 16. Okay, so now you guys can see I have these binomials that I want to create into a perfect square trinomial, right? right? So to do that, I have, let's do the x's over here. So I have x squared minus 2x. Let's create this into a perfect square trinomial, one that we can factor down. So remember, I have to do b divided by 2 and square it, which in this case is negative 2 divided by 2 squared, which is So therefore, I'm going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1. 
So I have 16 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Right? So now I'm adding a 1. But remember, since I'm adding a 1 on this left side, I notice that this 1 is being multiplied by 16. Right? So therefore, on the right side, I need to make sure that I also add a 1 multiplied by a 16. Right? If on the left side you added a 1 and it's being multiplied by a 16, then on the right side of the equation, you have to add a 1 multiplied by 16, which is just 16. Right? 16 times 1 is the same thing as 16 over here. I added it on the left side, so I'm going to add it on the right side. The negative stays there. Now, let's go and complete the square for y squared plus 2y. So again, we just do the same thing. b divided by 2 squared equals 2 divided by 2 squared, which equals 1. So therefore, I'm going to have, for this completing the square, I get y squared plus 2y plus 1. I'm going to have plus 25 times y squared plus 2y plus 1. Now, I'm pretty much the exact same thing. We're going to factor a little bit differently. But now, again, I'm adding a 1, means it's being multiplied by 25. So that means I need to add a 25 to the right side. So you guys see how the negative 16 stays with the negative 16. But then I added a 16 to the right side because I added a 16 to the left side. And I added a 25 to the right side because I added a 25 to the left side. Kind of make a little sense? Yeah. Yes. OK. So now we have a perfect square trinomial, which can factor down to a binomial yeah. square. Right? It's gonna, when you factor this, it becomes a binomial square. So what is this as a binomial square? x minus 1 squared, right? 16 times x minus 1 squared plus 25 times y plus 1 squared equals 25. Okay, so we're getting there. We got our binomial squares. That's good, right? right. We're almost there. But now the last step we need to do is we need to figure out what a and b are. We need to set them equal to 1, right? So to set these equal to 1, I now have to divide by 25. That will get that to 1, right? Yeah. So when I divide the left side by 25, I'm dividing both fractions by 25. So therefore, you can uh, look at this and you know, see, is this going to be getting um, reduced in this amount? Or is that one going to get reduced? Uh -huh. So right now, we're just going to have 16 times x minus 1 squared all over 25 plus y plus 1 squared equals 1. Uh, well, remember, this would be your A, right? That's going to be your A squared. That's what? But before we even get to this, though, you guys notice that we can't write this with it. We never, we don't have a coefficient of this, right? We can't write with the 16 multiplied by that, right? Yeah. So what we're going to be looking at is when going back through on this, um, what I can do is I can rewrite this as x minus your 1. I can write this rather than multiplying this by 16 divided by 25. That's the same thing as if I multiply. Um, and instead of my 16 over 25, what did I have over there? I had my 25 over 16. Oh, you can flip them. Are you doing? I'm rewriting it so I'm going to have my denominator. Okay? Because look at look about this. If I was to change this up, and do that? 
Listen to what I'm saying. Watch. If I wanted to get this off the bottom, what would I have to do? Multiply. I'd have to multiply by 16 over 25 times 16 over 25, right? Those would cancel out, and then I'd be left with this times 16 over 25, which was my original problem, right? But the reason why I have to write it like this is because I have to know what my a squared and my b squared are, right? So that's why I rewrote it with my fraction thing. All right, so let's try to get this done. Yeah, so 25 or 16 is fine. So therefore, what's my a squared? 25 over 16. So therefore, you can say a is going to equal plus or minus 5 fourths, right? My b squared is equal to 1, so b equals plus or minus 1, right? Yes. All right. And then let's go ahead and take a look at my c. So if I was going to try to find c, so remember we know a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Well, a squared is 25 over 16 equals b squared, which is 4, plus c squared. So I subtract 4, subtract 4. I'm running like out of room. 4. That's my b squared, right? No, it's 1. Oh, it's 1. Good call. So it's 1. So minus 1, minus 1. So how do you do 25? Um, over 16 minus 1. Well, what's 1 and 25 by 16 over 16, right? Yeah. So it would be 25 minus 16, which would be 9 yeah. over 16? Yeah. Okay. I say right. no, because 1, yeah, that's right. 1 equals 16 over 16. 9 over 16. Yeah. So if you do 25 over 16 oh, that's true. minus that's 16 right. over 16, it's 9 over 16. So right. 25 minus 16 right. divided by 1 changes over to 16 over 16, right? Holy crap. So, therefore, we can a let's quote c squared equals nine over sixteen. So to find c equals plus or minus three over four. Remember, I'm doing the hard one. You guys have the easier ones, right? So we have c is three is plus or minus three fourths. A is plus or minus five fourths, and b is plus or minus one. Now, I'm not going to go through the graphing because I'm, I'm losing my uh, mind trying to go through this. But let's just go through the center. The center is h comma k, right? 1 comma negative 1. Right? Remember, it's the opposite. Opposite of x, opposite, or opposite of h, opposite of k. The foci. Ladies and gentlemen, since my a is under my x, am I going to have a horizontal or a vertical ellipse? Horizontal. Horizontal, yeah, right? Exactly. So therefore, since it's all since it's horizontal, that means my foci and my vertices are all going to be on my horizontal major axis symmetry. So I'm going to add them to the h of my center rather than the k of my center. So if I look at this and I have c plus or minus 3 fourths, my center is going to be 1 plus or minus 3 fourths comma negative 1. Right? Yep. 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 Yeah. And then my vertices, which I'll, I'll simplify that in a second. Then my vertices, and the same thing, they're also going to be on there, but they're going to be plus or minus my a, which is 5 fourths. So that's going to be 1 plus or minus 5 over 4, comma, negative 1. All right? Um, and just for the length of this video, you guys can obviously just say, well, you know, this would obviously be uh, um, one fourth and seven fourths, right? Comma negative one, and then you can just add it plus or minus here, which would be uh, um, nine over four and negative one fourth, negative one. So just add them up. But for length of video, I think I've made a long enough video for you guys. I'm saying seven. Ooh, fourteen. That's a good one. <laughs>